Number five for our um, language and literacy development class. This is class five, can you believe it? It's going so, so fast, super fast. It's amazing. All right, so what are some of the things we're gonna see today? So the, uh, on the agenda, we have some announcements, what's coming up, we're gonna see, you know, what's, what's gonna happen next. And then we're going to talk about reading and writing from birth to age eight. So this is what we're going to explore today. Uh, the writer's workshop, what is the writer, writer's workshop model and how we can um, develop that in our classrooms. Um, now, the English language learners is like, that's a huge topic that we're going to explore. So how do we teach English language learners and what kind of supports that um, students need uh, if they are learning a second language, right? Or what we also call the dual language learners, the DLLs. And we're gonna talk about intentional read alouds. All right, so talking about reading and writing skills today. So children, so reading is the key to learning, right? So you can't learn if you don't know what you're reading about. You need to eventually learn to read so you're able to understand your, your um, content, correct? We've all been there. So it's important that we uh, help students um, be successful and it, that starts really early. So children usually learn to read and write around the age of five or six But we know that reading really starts From birth because it starts with the oral language that we've talked about in classes prior to this one So it starts with the development of oral language and then we develop the oracy the listening skills and the speaking and then eventually we're going to transfer that those skills as part of the reading process and then eventually the writing, so the literacy component of language, right? So ch children usually learn to read and write about, um, you know, the age, around the age of five or six. And educators have found that the skills of reading and writing complete complement one another. So the literacy um, kind of comes together once they both come together, right? Reading and writing. Um, the learning of each skill is made both easier and more effective when efforts in reading and writing are purposefully combined rather than separated. So as a teacher, you have to be very purposeful. You need to be integrating those two skills to be able to help your students. All right. Learning to read and write. So we're going to talk about the beginning years, the birth through... Uh, I cannot read the bottom. Um, let's see if I can. Um, if when you share, birth through preschool. Oh, there you go. Sorry about that. I could not read that part of the the screen. So let me go back to my um, previous share. Um, so children acquire language since birth to learn to read gestures, right? So they're reading what you're doing. They're reading what you're, um, you're trying to do, right? What you're trying to communicate. Then um, you're going to um, have different teaching strategies to cover different learning styles. So you have to have your backpack full of different strategies to be able to help them, um, you know, hit that particular skill that they need to learn. So learners are different, so you need to have different learning experiences, and that is done through different uh, strategies, right? So read aloud in small group settings, build understanding and comprehension. So you're going to have to have your room, like you're gonna have to have a whole group setting where everybody learns the lesson, and you're gonna have to have a small group setting and the read aloud, and you're gonna have to have different modalities throughout the room so that everyone has that opportunity to learn um, to read and write. All right, that can be done in many different ways and we can explore that in a little bit, all right? And then uh, children temporary invented spelling aids the relation between letters and sounds. So when children first start to read and write, they start with inventive spelling. That is really great because they will say, oh yeah, mom, dad, I'm writing, right? So they will um, have something along those lines of like, they're like, oh yeah, like they will write 
and it will look like scribbles and it will look like letters. You're like, oh wow, this is like, you know, real letters or something that resembles a, a letter. So that actually helps them. It's a strategy they're using to make that connection between letters and sounds. That's amazing. If that child is already at that stage, then you should really be encouraging that child to continue to do that because that's like the beginning of the literacy um, development for that child. So that means that he or she's already advancing really well, right? Now the next one is the writing process demonstrations ideally involve children in it. So you're like, mm, Angela, how come you have that sentence in that PowerPoint? Hmm, that slide. You're like, well, you should think that kids should be involved in the writing process. Well, it's kind of obvious, but is it? Well, children should be involved in what they're writing about. They should be invested in that process. You should be writing about things that they are excited about. So if you're, you know, uh, for, ex if, for example, my child, my daughter, she loves Christmas. So if I'm going to get her excited to write about something, maybe when it's Christmas time, I'm going to write a list of things that she wants for Christmas. That would be an example, right? Um, that's an easy one because she's going to want to talk about the toys she wants for Christmas. So easily I can model how to write. I can become a scribe. I will model the writing and then voila, here I have the writing process happening in front of me and she's part of that process, right? Perfect. Now, um, here I have the pre-writing. Pre-writing for toddlers and preschoolers. So I have the pre-writing skills are the fundamental skills children need to develop before they're able to write. So that is pre-writing. It's before they write. These skills contribute to the child's ability to hold and use a pencil and the ability to draw, write, copy, and color. So sometimes, like, you know, you're going to give your, um, your students pen or pencil. Sometimes you're going to give them the thicker ones because it's easier for them to grab. So you're going to think about like the fine motor skills that because that requires them to really develop that those uh, skills, right? The, the, the fine motor skills. So that is part of their development. So pre-writing skills uh, have to be uh, worked throughout your, your lessons so that the students are ready for writing. So let's watch this quick video and um, I want you to be thinking about how you would use strategies in your classroom for pre-writing as you watch it. All right, let's see what you think of this video. Play and learn with KiwiCo. Discover science, art, and imaginative play through hands-on projects your little learners will love. Learn more at KiwiCo.com. Hey guys, so this is going to be a super quick response video. So a few moms from the group have asked me about pre-writing books. What are they? and how do you introduce them to your children. So in this video today, I'm going to share some activity ideas and tips that you can do at home so that your child learns to write later in life. So basically, we need children to practice works that are going to help him or her strengthen the pincer grip, okay? The three finger touch grip, okay? And the activities that I'm going to show, just a few of them, but then you know, there are so many others that you can similarly do at home. Uh, and these works are going to ensure that the child will, you know, get that free flowing grip when he starts his formal writing, you know, writing seamlessly rather than, uh, you know, struggling and applying too much pressure while writing. And all these works are going to be introduced to a child in a way that he's really going to enjoy it there is no pressure okay and formal handwriting lessons 
uh, should not really be started early on and all that you really need to focus for younger toddlers for your two-year-olds three-year-olds four-year-olds is a lot of pre-writing words and today uh, this is what exactly I'm going to talk to you guys about now when I talk about pre-writing words I like to divide them into three categories but again these three categories are interconnected but again for the simplicity of this video let's just talk about them the first one that I really like to focus on are the practical light works you know your kinds like um, spooning and transferring and scooping activities letting the child help you around the house all sort of practical life works second your fine motor skills now again when the child is doing practical life works fine motor skills are covered automatically and third are your gross motor activities now for the current grip to happen you will see that it's not just the fingers of the child that are working okay so you have the fingers the wrist the elbow all the larger muscles are also working simultaneously so it's important to let the child play outside you know in Montessori classrooms they let the children uh, you know mop the floor broom the floor so these are all great movement based activities you can do at home so basically what I'm trying to say here is and I don't want to go off track but I just want to say that you do not really need to do any formal lessons uh, for your child okay if you pay enough attention for letting the child explore his body naturally you know in a very seamless manner at home and outside half the preparation is done and it's just a matter of time when the child will show a lot of interest to write and that will happen anytime around four and a half plus so do not push it before that i guess without much ado i'm just going to show you some examples really quick right so let's start with few examples of practical life works you can start with something like a dry pouring work so basically just give same size two containers to your child let the child use his hands to transfer the contents from one container to the other once he shows interest in this you can move on to wet pouring Next, encourage your child to get involved in all sort of household chores can be drying the clothes, trying to fold his own clothes, uh, helping you in cooking, you know, the list is really endless here. Also buy a Montessori inspired dressing framework or you can easily DIY it at home too. One great example is any sort of lacing or beading or threading work. Also clay work, again a fabulous way to strengthen those little fingers. And painting, let it be totally unstructured, let the child explore different mediums, different kind of brushes, sponges, let him even use his hands and fingers for painting. beautiful words are indirectly helping with their fine motor skills as well let me give you a few more example of fine motor activities but really you can make do with whatever you have at home i in fact have a video uh, exclusively on fine motor activities uh, which i'm going to link below which you can check out one really fun fine motor activity is letting the child put coins in a piggy bank if the child is really small and still mouthing you can probably give them larger tokens to put in also using tongs to transfer pom-poms and things like that again a great way to work those little muscles and then letting the child scribble using some chalks older children you can use something like this a square chalkboard but again i wouldn't stress one bit on staying within the lines 
you just need to let them explore it in their own way. Puzzles, any sort of puzzles, peg puzzles, jigsaw puzzles are again a great way of strengthening those finger muscles. you can progress to tracing in Montessori you have the beautiful metal insets but at home you can kind of make do with whatever you have child is showing enough interest you can teach them how to draw lines and let them just explore it in a very unstructured way you can you know introduce sleeping lines standing lines wavy lines curved lines okay so the whole idea here is to just let them explore their grip Then you can slowly progress to sandpaper tracing or tracing in the salt tray. And, wash the spider out. Out came the sun. and most importantly, the cross motor activities, be it at home or outdoor sea. These coupled with practical life and fine motor works are a great precursor to formal handwriting lessons. I hope you found this video useful. I wanted to keep it super simple and if you have any more queries, please drop them as comments below. I would love to answer them and I'll see you guys around. Until then, bye. We are KiwiCo and we deliver... All right. Perfect. Okay. So let me go back here. Okay. All right. So here we are again. So we have some ideas for our pre writing, right? Activities. Wasn't that video awesome? I really, really liked it. Really, really liked it. Okay, so keep thinking about that. What are some activities that you can do every day for your students, what you can provide them uh, with? What are some of those opportunities, you know, um, the everyday stuff that will allow them to develop? And then maybe um, have a, like a homeschool connection, help the parents figure out things that the kids can do at home. Also, that will help them develop the fine motor skills that will help them with the writing. It's just so easy. You got this. Now, in kindergarten, right, it gets a little more um, official, let's say. They finish preschool and they go to kindergarten. And so, interactions uh, with a rich variety of print is what really will happen. So, there you will have around the room all, a lot of text, a lot of chants, a lot of um, visuals for them. And um, they're going to need that because they're trying to write. They're, they need models around the room. They need labels around the room. They need things, uh, you know, the garbage can, label it garbage. Have that. We had that discussion last class. So have that, okay? So the next thing is vocabulary. So enhance children's vocabulary development through listening to stories, explanation of vocabulary words and repeating readings, in language experience charts, dictation, and letter recognition. Those are some strategies that you can use to um, broaden their vocabulary. Okay, I know I just said a bunch of um, strategies, but think about that. You can really enhance their vocabulary by having those things in place. Repeat readings that they are familiar with. Have charts, have dictation, repeat those words, right? Have that 
over and over again, letter recognition, um, practice things over and over again. Repetition is good. So have repetition for them. Now phonemic awareness is our next topic. So phonemic awareness is not a solitary insight or an instant ability. It takes time and practice. So phonemic awareness is something you gotta practice daily. You gotta have opportunities throughout the day to practice phonemic awareness throughout the week, throughout your, your month, and then keep go doing that, circling back to that, spiraling back. Um, and some students will catch up, you know, as, so some kids will learn right away, and then some kids will kind of catch up with the other ones as they're like, oh, oh, I get it now, right? And so little by little, you're gonna notice that the kids are like, okay, they, they get it, they know, they know what they're doing, and so it gets easier for you. Um, and then the next thing is shared writing helps children attend to the features of print and the alphabetic nature of language. So shared writing is when you write in front of the class. So you might have a document camera, you're gonna model the writing, or um, you have a big easel paper or a whiteboard and you're, you're writing in front of the kids with the kids. They can see it, they all have access to that writing. It's usually big or projected on the screen. So that helps them with features of print. They can see if it's a round movement, if it's a stick, figure kind of thing. So what kind of letter it is, right? Um, is it a number, is it a letter? They, that's when you're, you're supposed to be like pointing those things out. How do you write the letter? What does it look like? What letter is this? Give me another word that starts with the same letter. I'm gonna be making connections and um, helping kids get um, familiar with, with print. And so that's how kids learn language, right? And the next one is writing integrated in other areas of the curriculum engage children in learning. So you can only engage children if they are making connections. You cannot just teach about science if they don't make a connection with language or just teach language just for language. If you don't have connections between your subjects, like you know, learning math, and you're teaching vocabulary through, so it's language and math, mathematics, it's science and language. And so it's social emotional learning. And then you have a reading that goes with that. So it's all connected. You're going to integrate. Think about that word, integrate. And this is kindergarten, okay? This is the picture that you see in front of you is an example of uh, shared writing, okay? The teacher is is being a scribe. It, it, she is or he is modeling from the class. All right, so emergent writing is our next topic, all right? Emergent writing means that children begin to understand that writing is a form of communication and their marks on paper convey a message. So like, why do we write? That's a big deal. Why do we write? And so, oh, I can write because I, I want to send you a message. I want to send you a letter. Maybe I want my principal at my school to have a special lunch for all the kids. Or maybe instead of a water fountain, I want a chocolate fountain in the cafeteria. Oh, that's a crazy idea. Oh, is it? Maybe not, right? So um, that's when the kids realize that we write for a purpose. Communication has to have a purpose, right? It's like we text, right? You grab your phone and you text your, your friend, your neighbor, your, your colleague, right? And then you're like, oh, okay, that makes sense to me. Like, you know, I'm, I'm messaging for, for a reason, for a purpose. So for the kids, they have to find that purpose as well. So let's, let's watch this quick video also. And ooh, let me go back one right here. There you go. And... Let's come back in a second, all right? Oh, let me go back one. Just keep keeps jumping on, you know, like back and forth. All right. All right. <laughs> Emergent writing is a term that describes the process of when children begin to understand that writing is a form of communication and their marks on paper begin to convey a message. Writing is a way of sharing one's ideas and knowledge. It is a method of personal communication and conveys a message that can be read at a later time. What would you like for it to say? 
All right, that was very nice. Providing opportunities for children to write supports their development as readers. Are you going to the zoo on a helicopter? Cool. You want me to write that down? Huh? Okay. When children experiment with writing, they think about what they know about print and how it works. As children engage in meaningful writing experiences and are encouraged to explore and learn more about print, they are also learning about reading. See if you can help them. And her sister played in the bedroom. One goal of emergent writing instruction would be to help children realize that print conveys meaning. Teachers can scaffold writing instruction using several different approaches. Jesse says he was baby. By the end of the year, it's important for both the teacher and the children to contribute their thoughts and ideas and be actively involved in the writing process together. All right, we're going to write a story. What's something we could write about? About a potato. A potato? Uh -oh. Or a boat. Or a boat. A bunny. A bunny? Yeah, just a bunny. You think we could write one about all three? Yeah. You think? Okay, let's We can write our own story. Yeah, you can help me write this one. What? Once upon, what comes oh. next? A. A time, that's right now. In this clip, you can see the teacher is working with a small group of children using a guided writing technique. It's important that children's thoughts are validated and teachers are involved with the discussion. Whilst, and what is yours? Look at back of worm. A worm, and what is yours? A worm. Oh my, now how are we going to make a story out of these four cards? I know. One, you just got to put them three, together. Four. We do have to put them together with some other words, yes, don't we? Okay, so we need to find the characters for our story. Oh, yeah. the wasp is going to try to sting the worm. The and, worm is going to hide. hide now, how is the out. wolf and the watermelon going to come in here? So let's start our story out. Guided writing is one way that teachers can scaffold writing instruction to promote children's independent writing at times paper? throughout the day. Um, they're outside and they're getting water. What's what's outside getting water? Look at mine. The flowers. Okay, this so flower we can say like a, the flowers like are trap. outside. Now remember, it's going to be at the beginning of a sentence. So it's got to be a capital T. Very good. I'm gonna write some words. Two of them. Very good. The. There are other techniques that teachers may use to scaffold the emergent writing process. Shared writing with an individual child. This is my picture. Shared writing with a small group. So you said something about, I think I heard you say something about taking a bath. So can you like, wash yourself now by yourself? Yeah. Okay, let's write that there. Write it right there. You don't have to have someone there washing you all the time. Adrian says he can... Shared writing with the whole group. I'm going to write this. What is this word right here? I bet you can read this word. What does this one say? Is, is if I'm gonna write miss, what letter does miss begin with? M. So I'm gonna write miss, and my name is what? Jill. So what letter does J -J -J Jill begin Jill. with? Jill. Miss Jills. It is important to use a variety of techniques to foster emergent writing in young children. You'll find additional information about emergent writing in the Read About It section of the workshop series.